Hey guys, welcome back to another book overview video and today we're going to take a look at The Art of Remember Me, a game that I beat recently and I did an impressions video and oddly enough, I thought the game was good but it's nothing great. However, uh, one of the main highlights of the game for me was the futuristic cyberpunk setting of Neo Paris in the game, which which is, uh, it happens in the year 2084, a futuristic setting that I was really immersed into it and I'm gonna go ahead and say it, it it's one of my favorite settings of this of this last generation along with Rap Rapture. So for me to put uh, Neo Paris along with Rapture just goes to show that um, I really love the setting and it's unfortunate that the game did not really allow you to explore the city of Neo Paris in depth. Um, but enough of you know the praise, let's just take a look at the concept art of this game and unfortunately this game was developed by a French studio called Dunnod which it closed down recently I believe they filed for bankruptcy and it was uh, really interesting to read the foreword by the creative uh, directors of the of the art in the game how they um, they set up the setting of Neo Paris and it took them four years to come up uh, with the I know with the concept art and the final uh, all the way to the uh, realization of the game, you know, finishing the game, developing it, and whatnot. So here you guys can see, this is why I love this game. A very futuristic setting, um, just a very interesting, somber, kind of dark and sad, uh, futuristic look that uh, these people gave to, to, to Paris. Uh, very, very cool setting, if you ask me. And you can see here, you have some classic features, you know, you have the typical architecture that can be found through, you know, in Paris or throughout Europe, um, you know, classic uh, buildings, and then combined with, uh, you know, the futuristic uh, setting, you see some neon lights, you see, um, you know, big screen TVs with advertisements and whatnot. Here we can see the uh, Memorize building, um, which is the the company you fight against in, in the game. And as I was mentioning, it's unfortunate that the game did not really um, let you explore. That's one that, that was one of my main complaints with this game, that I really wanted to explore the Neo Paris setting. And unfortunately, the game took a Uncharted-like approach when it came to um, do the platforming and the exploration of the city. Uh, it was very linear, very um, scripted. Uh, this is another phenomenal part of the game, the advertisement. Um, as you can see, it's very varied and I spent a lot of time while playing the game just stopping by to, uh, to look at the posters and the different advertisements found throughout Neo Paris. Very, very immersive, very cool, um, very cool, um, you know, colors and, and uh, use of... Uh, art in this game. Here we have the uh, main protagonist of the game, Nilan. Uh, that's the cover of the game. And uh, here you can see a couple of um, early uh, concept art for, uh, for Nilan. You can see her in different clothing. Uh, this is actually how you start the game uh, with this clothing and then you move into the, um, into the jeans and jacket um, clothing that is characteristic of, uh, of her. And this book is divided into different chapters. And as you can see here, this showcases a little bit more of the city. Uh, just a fantastic setting that I would really, uh, I feel a little bit sad because uh, we'll never get to explore this. I don't think this game was very successful uh, commercially. And with the closing of the studio that created the game, I don't think we'll ever see something like this again, which is very unfortunate. Here we can see the leapers, which are uh, one of the many types of enemies you encounter throughout the game. A very bizarre and grotesque looking creatures. Um, here you see some of the characters you meet throughout the game. Uh, this is a bounty hunter that you meet uh, early in the game. And uh, here we have more, even more concept art. This is one of my favorite uh, concept arts here in the game. You can see a very typical European-like, um, you know, downtown, um, you know, 
strip, like shopping strip, but it has touches, like futuristic touches to it. Um, very unique, very clever, and again, it's a true shame that you were not able to explore these settings in full detail in the game. For me, ideally, it would have been so awesome if this game had the same scope as perhaps Infamous Second Son for the PS4, in which the city is not, you know, huge. You know, in, in Infamous Second Son, Seattle is not a huge uh, city to explore, but it's big enough that it lets you um, appreciate, you know, the, the city and its different locations. So it's unfortunate that this game is absolutely um, very linear and very scripted, and I can't help but to think that Capcom had a uh, had a saying on that. Um, it's obvious that the budget budget of this game was not the uh, the largest, so it's understandable from that point of view. But by reading the foreword of the creative director of this game, you can definitely tell that these guys would have would have done a great job. Uh, given a bigger budget to create perhaps a more of a of a uh, open world type of experience similar to you know say infamous second son uh, but uh, this is what we have you know unfortunately the game uh, came out and it was a little bit uh, too linear like I, like I mentioned before and here we have the leaking brain one of my uh, one of the uh, bars that you go early in the game to um, gather uh, more info and to meet a new character. Uh, that's the guy you meet. It all happens in chapter one, so no, no spoilers there. Um, just a fantastic game. I'm gonna start flipping a little bit faster because this is just uh, more of the same. Uh, I do have to. I, I do want to point out this uh, settings. These are like lab and. Uh, factory type settings that you visit in later chapters in the game which unfortunately these are not as good as the Neo Paris settings and these are a little bit more bland more generic and more cookie cutter um, settings if you will so it's a little bit unfortunate that uh, uh, the later chapters in the games have, in the game have that type of setting but uh, uh, nevertheless the, the game has a pretty good graphics for being a you know seventh gen PS3 360 uh, game, uh, and especially the lighting effects. They have this very particular lighting effect that almost looks like really fake. It's very bright and it makes objects look very shiny. Uh, it kind of reminds me of Mirror's Edge and the uh, overall uh, Frostbite engine used by Dice. Um, but um, th these kind of lights in-game are very bright and very fake and plasticky, if you will. But they give the game a unique personality that uh, you can only tell by, you know, when you're playing the game that um, it's a very unique. And as I mentioned before, you know, I spent a good portion uh, of playing the game just uh, looking at the scenery, looking at the details, looking at the uh, walls, at the floor, at the propaganda in the game at the advertisement and uh, here we're entering I believe spoiler territory because we're getting to towards the end of the book so if you guys haven't played this yet this was offered as a PlayStation Plus game very recently so I highly highly encourage that you guys um, give this game a shot just because um, it's very unique from that uh, from that whole um, just neo paris setting so make sure you guys give this game a shot take a quick look um, the gameplay is not the best there are some interesting ideas and if you're interested in hearing more about the gameplay and its issues and its highs and lows check out my impressions video on this game but uh, remember me a very good game shame that these guys the don not studio in france they're not going to be making a sequel um, it's a true shame, but this is a pretty impressive art book that uh, if you guys enjoy the game, I highly recommend that you get this book. So um, that's it for now. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all later.